Today on That's Juan, a groundbreaking YouTube exclusive. That's Juan talks with Ivanka Trump. What does she have to say about her father's immigration policies? Also, we speak with Ivanka Trump regarding her role in the White House. And this week, we highlight Dorothy Dandridge in our Black Women's History Month series. All that and so much more today on That's Juan. So let's get started. doing today it is Tuesday March 13th and welcome to another that's Juan I'm Juan today I have a very 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 special guest and it's none other than first daughter Ivanka Trump so later in the show I will be interviewing her so this should get interesting I don't know who convinced her but I'm glad they did as I said, today is March 13th, and today I'm introducing a new segment that I'm going to be doing every week. On this Tuesday, since I do a weekly Tuesday show, I am going to be bringing you guys history facts of what happened on this day a long, long time ago. So let's find out what happened on this Tuesday. On this day, March 13th, 1852, the cartoon figure of Uncle Sam made its debut in the New York Lantern Weekly. On this day in 1884, the U.S. adopts the Standard Time. Oh, you're, you're back. Okay. All right, moving on to the big topic of today. So if you remember, during election season, I interviewed then-presidential candidate Trump. I requested a follow-up interview now that he's been in office for over a year and was denied. Uh, he felt attacked during that interview. Joe know why. Said that it was locker room banter and a lot of people are saying that's not locker room talk. What do you have to say about that? I think you understood what was said. This no, I get it. You're a misogynist. Okay. Well, I don't know how. I've never, you know, I thought it was a fair interview. So then I was like, okay. Fine. So, uh, yeah, no. And uh, so I was like, okay, who can we get to come here to defend the Trump White House? We need somebody. They offered us Kellyanne Conway. I said, no, no, I said no. I get vertigo from spinning too much. To my surprise, our next guest volunteered to come on the show. She's a fan. Live from Washington over the phone. Everyone, please welcome Miss Obama. Ivanka, how are you today? I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you. I didn't want to know that much. So let's get right into it. I know we don't, you don't have a lot of time. Your father declined an interview with me because they felt that they were attacked. Have you spoken to them about coming on here? What have they said uh, about me attacking them? If you can uh, clarify that for me. I think it's a pretty inappropriate question to ask a daughter. Uh, oh. Okay. All right, so let's, uh, let me ask you, uh, uh, um, okay. So, Ivanka, how would you grade your father's first year, honestly? Oh, father's uh, record. Before, uh, let, let me cut you off real quick before you start. Um, I want 100% honesty. It's almost impossible to describe. Wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ivanka, your father, over the past year your father uh, immigration has been a big uh, ticket item on your father's agenda and he has said some crazy stuff about immigrants and being a child of immigrants that affects me personally and that makes me angry and so what I would like to know and what a lot of dreamers and immigrants and children of immigrants and you know families that don't want to be broken up want to know is is your father looking out for for these people who are American, whether you want to believe it or not? I think it's a pretty inappropriate question to ask a daughter. I don't think that's a question you would ask many other daughters. I believe my father. I know my father. Uncle, what are you willing to tell us? I don't know that people appreciate his tremendous empathy and his warmth, but they should. Our country needs a president who's able to dream big. A lot of critics have uh, have made a point, a valid one at that, that you have been complicit in some of your father's actions, whether it be the 16 accusers and how you um, have basically said it. 
you don't believe them. You have also remained silent on um, the Me Too movement and the Time's Up. And a lot of people are saying that you are doing absolutely nothing for women. So how could you defend the complicit adjective that has been brought upon you? If being complicit is wanting to is wanting to be a force for good and to make a positive impact, then I'm complicit. I know what it means to be um, complicit. But do you feel his policies for immigration and this wall that he wants are a little bit on the, you know, borderline racist? Can you defend that? We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Hello? Ivanka? Is she? Is she? Mrs. Trump? Mrs. Kushner? Ivanka? <laughs> All right, welcome back to that one. So it looks like we were cut off. Um, I'm gonna assume the line was um, damaged. We'll try to reconnect and if we're able to get back up, um, we'll definitely um, continue our conversation with Mrs. Trump. It's time to honor another black woman since it's March and it's Women History Month. So I'd like to continue this awesome tradition of highlighting some Af some badass African-American women who have broken barriers in any field. This week, we're gonna highlight Dorothy Dandridge and she was the first African-American to be ever nominated for an Academy Award or an Oscar for Best Actress. Dorothy Jean Dandridge was born on November 9, 1922 in Cleveland, Ohio. Pushed into show business at an early age by her mother, Dandridge performed with her sister Vivian as a song and dance team called The Wonder Children. As an African-American singer, Dandridge confronted early on the segregation and racism of the entertainment industry. She may have been allowed on stage, but in some venues she couldn't eat in the restaurant or use certain facilities because of the color of her skin. In 1954, Dandridge starred in the movie movie Cameron Jones, a film adaptation of Bizet's opera Carmen that also starred Harry Belafonte. With her sultry look and flirtatious style, Dandridge became the first African American to earn an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. The sooner we get there, the quicker we gotta bust apart. Cut that out. Get over where you belong just what I'm doing. Unfortunately, Dandridge lost the Academy Award to Grace Kelly. Dandridge seemed well on her way to achieve the level of fame and superstardom enjoyed by white contemporaries like Marilyn Monroe and Eva Gardner since they all had the same style. And in 1955, she was featured on the cover of Life magazine. However, after her success in, with Carmen Jones, Dandridge had trouble finding film roles that suited her talents, but found her opportunities limited because of her race. Dandridge was found dead in her Hollywood home at age 42 on September 8, 1962. Dorothy Dandridge is now known as one of the first African-American women to introduce a sexy, sultry version of African-American women in this country. So thank you, Miss Dorothy Dandridge. Well, and there you have it. Unfortunately, we could not get Miss Trump back on the phone, so I guess that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and come back next week for more here on That's One. I'm Juan, and I'll see you guys next week.